there's one other practice too. I wasn't sure about including this or not, but I think it's useful. And this has to do with your sleeping dreams. In this way, your sleeping dreams can also help you understand awareness, your true nature. So if you will, imagine a recent dream, re-experience a recent dream, something that's vivid enough that you can remember. And when you remember it, you can kind of relive it, you know, close your eyes and just experience that dream for a moment. And you'll notice that in this dream, there's objects, dream objects, things, an environment, and a table, chair, whatever, if you're inside, if you're outside a forest, whatever it is, there's, an, there's objects there, there might be people. And there's also someone who is aware of this, the dreamer the experiencer, the perceiver of this dream, which is you. And so as you're reliving this dream, that's obvious there's someone experiencing this dream. Now from your perspective now, looking back on this dream, looking back into this dream, see if you can find that Perceiver, that body, that person that's experiencing the dream. See if you can find that person. This is another type of meditation called insight meditation. We're looking at things that we haven't noticed before. We haven't looked into, like space. Here we're looking for the dreamer of our dream. We take it as obvious there must be someone who's aware of the dream. I'm, I'm aware of the dream. I'm dreaming it. I'm aware of it. I'm the person aware of the dream. I'm the one experiencing the dream. But see if there is anyone there. From this perspective, looking back, see if you can find that person, that dreamer, that perceiver, that experiencer. This is an interesting experience because you'll find there isn't one. How can that be? But see if you can find him. No one ever has. <laughs> it has looked. No one ever has. And there's another part to this the dream objects in the dream, right? In our day-to-day -day life, we see many things in our day-to-day -day life. And all those things, we see them because they're illuminated by the sun or artificial light. Without the sun or artificial light, we can't see anything. We see because the light is reflected off the objects into our retina, and that's how we see. Without that, we can't see. Now go back to the dream again and see if you can find that artificial light or sun. It's not there. So how are these objects appearing? What's illuminating them? The mind. The mind is illuminating them. The mind is creating them. That's awareness. And what about the perceiver of the dream, of these dream objects? It's the same. It's the mind. 
There's no perceiver. There's no objects, there's just the mind. The dream is dreaming itself. The mind is aware of itself. It's self-reflective. Awareness is self-reflective. It's only ever aware of itself. So the dream, doing this little dream experience can help us experience emptiness. Experience awareness. There's something that's experiencing all this, but it's not a self, not a person, not a dreamer, not a thing. And yet all these things in the dream did appear, right? We won't deny that. They did appear. There are appearances, right? We're, we're reliving it and seeing it. It's Yes, it's all there, just like it was in, when I was asleep. And there appears to be a perceiver, just like when I was asleep in a non-lucid dream. So this brings us to a much deeper experience than our usual experience of like, I am a person and I'm experiencing this, you know, these things that are all exactly as I think they are. All name and form. It doesn't discount that they're things, that they're the appearance of things, that the appearances are here at all. But it sees it in a very different way. They're not things. They're not what they appear to be. They're not what I think they are. And yet they are. It's hard for the mind to really grasp that. But this is where space is useful. This is where letting go is useful letting go of our old ways of perceiving, our old ways of thinking, our old ways of experiencing, and experiencing in a, a much deeper, wider, more spacious way. This is the wisdom of non-duality, wisdom of, of the spiritual teachings of emptiness, of awareness, of fullness, of oneness. It's not really accessible to the mind. The wisdom comes from something beyond this. We experience it. as our true nature, as what we are. So to the ego, it's a little frightening to think there's no perceiver. <laughs> there's no, no dream character. In a way, that's a form of ego death. And some people call meditation simply death in slow motion. <laughs> but what we awaken to is so profoundly beautiful, so profoundly amazing, wonderful, our true nature, what doesn't die, 
what was never born, what's not a thing, what's free of all that, our fundamental nature. It puts all the rest in perspective. From here we understand in Nirmakaya the, the body of manifestation of form. We understand the subtle body of consciousness. We understand our true nature. 